Hello students. In this video, we're going to determine the null space of a matrix, and we're going to relate that null space to the solution space of this matrix. All right, so the null space is defined as the vectors in Rn, where n is the number of columns, such that um, these vectors, when multiplied by the matrix, give you the zero vector, so they result in zero. Okay. Now, whenever you're determining a null space, very much like when you're trying to find a column space or a row space, you reduce the matrix down to its RREF. Right? So I did that here, and I encourage you to do that. In this case, I have a 3 by 5 matrix, so this matrix is an element of the vector space of matrices, 3 by 5 matrices that have real entries, and I denote that by this notation here. A is an element of R 3 by 5. So let's see how this relates to the solution space. Any solution to the system AX equals B can be decomposed into its homogeneous and particular solution. Okay, so XH will be the homogeneous solution. That's the solution that when you plug it into the system, you get zero on the right-hand side. So th these are the vectors. The homogeneous solutions are the vectors that give you zero. That's related, of course, to the null space. That looks very similar to null space, and in fact, that is the case. So that implies that if you have AX equals B, if you were to take the solution and plug it back in, then when you distribute the A through this linear combination of AX plus XP, then you'll see that you have AXH plus AXP is equal to B, but AXH is equal to zero, okay? So you're just left with AXP is equal to B. So it's the particular solution that gives you the right-hand side. Now, you will recall that if you have a unique solution, then the only solution to the homogeneous equation is the zero solution. But in some cases, you have an infinite number of solutions. And if you had an infinite number of solutions, then it was this part, the AX equals zero, that contributed the infinite number of solutions to your system. So, this is, so it's the AX equals zero that gave you the free variables for the system. The AXP, that's a particular solution. Those are a particular set of vectors that give you the right-hand side. So it's the null space that contributes to the um, infinite number of solutions to write to your solution space when you had an infinite number of solutions. But there's this intimate relationship between the null space and the solution space. So the dimension of your null space will be the same as the dimension of your solution space. All right, so to find the null space, we're going to set up this system of equations, AX equals zero. And we'll see if we get a non-trivial homogeneous solution. So here I have AX equals zero, and I'm just going to row reduce that system. I already did that up here. I had the RREF sitting here waiting for me. So here I have the pivot columns that correspond to X1 and X3. And then x2, x4, and x5 are free variables, so I'm going to parameterize those with the free parameters r, s, and t. And then I'm just simply going to solve um, for x1 and x3. When I solve for x1, I'll get 2. When I move this minus 2 over, I'll get 2r. When I move the minus 1 over, I'll get 1s. And when I move to 3 over, I'll get minus 3t. x2 will give me, when I move this over, I'll get minus 2s. And when I move to minus 2 over, I'll get 2t. So here's what x1 and x3 look like. And then, of course, x2 was the free, x2 is a free variable, so it's parameterized by r. So x2 is equal to r. x4 is a free variable, it's parameterized by s. And x5 is a free variable, parameterized by t. So when I write this as a vector, I get the following solution as a vector. Um, I'm going to break this up into three vectors, actually. So to do that, sometimes students find it helpful if you were to fill in, you know, zeros for the R's here, you know, zeros where you have the S's here and zeros where you have the blank spots for the T's. Um, let me just uh, show that to you one more time. So you have something that looks like that, and then I just fill that in, okay? Then um, I have 2, 1, 0, 0, 0 for the first column here. I have 1, 0, minus 2, 1, 0 for the next column and minus three, zero, two, zero, one for the last column. And so that means that these three vectors here are the vectors that span the null space. So these vectors 
are the bases for the null space. And the way we write that is we say that the null space is given by these three vectors. Notice that that is a sub space of the vector space R5, which is the number of five is the number of columns we have. And so that makes sense because right, these vectors have to collapse down on top of each of these rows. And so you need them to have dimension five. And um, you could double check and test this out. So if I, let's say I were to take the vector two, one, zero, 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 and I were to multiply it by this matrix. If I take two times minus three, I get minus six. One times six gives me six. And then everything else is zeroed off. So I just ignore that, neglect that. So minus six plus six gives us zero. Two times one is two. Minus two is zero. Everything else got zeroed out. 2 times 2 is 4, minus 4 is 0, everything else got zeroed out. And similarly, you can check to see if these two vectors, in fact, when you multiply by this matrix, give you 0. And it turns out the R, S, and T indicate to us that, yeah, any scalar multiple of these um, vectors will give you the 0 vector. So that means that the null space is spanned by these three vectors. So any vector in a null space, it can be written as a linear combination of these three vectors, and these three vectors are... In fact, independent, you can see that by the pivots here, uh, 1, 1, and 1. And so um, these vectors are uh, linearly independent. And so that means that these vectors form the basis for the null space as well. All right, so the null space is a subspace of the vector space R5 in this case. OK, so that's how you find the null space of a matrix. Get down to the RREF and then um, set the right-hand side equal to zero, and then determine what your solution is. Sometimes your solution may just be the zero vector. In that case, you'll have a unique solution to the system AX equals B. In this case, because of the free parameters contributed by this AX equals zero, the homogeneous solution, you have an infinite number of solutions to the system. All right, good luck.